there. Would you like to be amazed? I will show you a magic trick. <sighs> There's so many things I love about magic. But the one thing I don't really like about magic is magic. And by that, I mean it's the framing of something amazing inside a dead ceremony where I know something, but you don't. But you know how lucky you are? I'm going to demonstrate to you. If you sit down and be quiet, shh, just sit still. I will show you again and again that I know things that you don't know. How lucky are you? The dead ceremony. So magic is this, to me, tragic, weird thing. Because you know, the cards are never lost. It's the magicians that are lost. They're the lost ones, okay? And so in a way I find it tragic and unfortunate and weird and empty and meaningless. But here's the exciting part for me, because if I can actually entertain people, if I can actually make people give a crap, what I've done, frankly, from an artistic point of view, without using animals, without using lemurs, without using politics, without using sex, without using drugs, if I can get people to actually give a crap about what I just did, as meaningless as it is, that's pretty cool. Having said all that, I want to bring it around to this trick, this torn and restored straw wrapper, pretty banal little idea. However, do it in the right time, in the right way, right context, you will shock your friends. It's a real stunner because it's not presented as a magic trick. One of the ways I create my magic tricks is I start with, and I try to keep it, you know, no expectations, no assumptions, no givens, just what do I want the illusion to look like? And with this one, what I want it to look like and what the motivation I wanted to give you here on this is I want it to look like uh, I'm, at, uh, I'm at a McDonald's or I'm at a Harvey's or I'm at some restaurant where they have wrap straws. And we've just brought the food to the table. I'm hanging out with my friends, got a couple of straws. And what I do is I tear off a piece. I tear off the end of the straw, throw it away. Then I start to pull the, the, the straw out of the wrapper and then I say, oh, wait a second, I'm sorry. No, I didn't even wash my hands. You'd probably like to unwrap your own straw. And that's the motivation in the right place. Now you can present this as a trick walking around at a restaurant and you can present it more as a full on trick. We're going to use this as a magic wand and uh, actually, wait a second, I tore it open. I want you to tear it open. So you could do it like that when you tear and restore it or hanging around with friends. You don't present it as a trick. You're just sitting there and you tear it off. You start to pull it out and say, I'm sorry, I didn't wash my hands and then boom like this and you want to restore it. That's how I want it to look. So you need a, a, a totally ungimmicked and wrapped straw, okay? A short piece of the straw matching. Now I'm going to warn you right now, you want to pre-cut this with a pair of scissors or a straight blade or something because I have hung out with friends, gone to the can and tried to use, get some gimmicks going with a straw using my teeth or a key and it always looks like crap. So this is something you do need, you can't do on the fly. You do need a pair of scissors and need to prepare beforehand. So it's about an inch, inch, about an inch long. Then if you really want to add to the illusion, you can have a torn piece and I'll show you this, but you don't need this piece. You really only need these two and a thumb tip. Now I've created a whole bunch of tricks with a thumb tip, but boy, this is just so practical. So, you know, so practical. You can just have this in your pocket when you want to do this right inside your pocket here, okay? When you want to do this, you slip your thumb inside the thumb tip and you're ready to go, okay? I love using a thumb tip. I love the fact that your hands can be handled. Uh, you know, you can even quickly show your hands. You, you want to make sure that with, with thumb tips, there's a couple of quick pointers here, is you generally want people to either be looking at this or looking at the back of your hand, okay? And it's, it's just about keeping the hands moving and not and, and nearing. I've talked about this before. If you just have one hand moving, it pulls a lot of focus. But if both your hands are moving, okay, you'll find that if both hands are moving, that uh, they share the focus, okay? So I'm here. I could pick this off of someone's tray, okay? This is my hands down by my side or my hands on the table. I'm leaning slightly and that gives me the perfect motivation for my fingers to be on top and my thumb down below the table, okay? That way there's no way anybody can see anything. I, and I'm holding this uh, with about an inch there. So I come over and the first thing I'm going to do is pretend to tear off the piece and put it aside. And it's a total ruse because all I'm going to do is come over and I'm actually going to put the thumb and fingers directly in front of it. So I don't take it like this. I take, I put everything in front. Then I push the, the little piece down. Then I do that action. Okay. 
but it looks to all the world like you come over, grab the piece, and tear it off. And yes, they don't see the piece, okay? You put it off. No one's caring, especially if you perform this in a casual way. You just drop it off the edge of the table or onto the ground. Okay. Now, like I said, if you want, you can have this extra piece in a palm. Basically, this would be in your pocket along with this little piece. You could clip this, you could have this here. And that way, of course, you can do this, do this, pretend to tear it, and then drop it right on the table. I mean, there's no question that adds a lot to the illusion, but I don't think you need it. Second part is that I'm, I'm going to come over and my action of pulling out the straw is going to provide me with the perfect natural visual cover to load the thumb tip directly behind everything, squeeze it nice, and then pull this out to there. Now, I, the one thing you don't want to do, and this is very important, is if you pull this out, if it's on an angle, the illusion is ruined because you've got this straight line here, even a subtle angle. So it's better to pull out less and keep the illusion straight, okay? Better to pull out a little bit less than pull out too far and get into trouble here. So you just pull out a little bit, okay? And the thumb tip can either, if you prefer, to make sure your angles are better, you can have this whole thing more into your hand down in here, pretend to tear it off and literally jam that down into the hand and go for more of a fist kind of thing, okay, there. So the situation now is everything is concealed, but the illusion, the visuals on it are really strong. Some of you will feel more comfortable doing that. Others want to hide the thumb tip. Uh, others would want to keep it more at the fingertips, sort of like this, okay? And I always use a Vernet thumb tip. I love the Vernet. And here, I've got everything sort of squeezed more behind, more angle issues for sure. And uh, like this, okay? And Vernet is spelled V-E-R-N-E-T. They really are the best thumb tips on the market. And then to finish, I just come over, I push it back as if it's going back into the, back into the straw, back into the wrapper. I push it into the thumb, and now I basically just give the whole thing a squeeze. Immediately keep the focus is here. As the hand comes over here, I want all focus on the end there as I restore that. I don't want any heat down here. So it's about moving the visual focus from here, okay? But notice, if you do the old school, if you, all you're gonna do is this honk, like this have this moment here and come away it is going to create this a lot of suspicion so you really want to use the right fingers okay to really massage the end maybe bring it up a bit then slowly bring your hand down as the left fingers all of a sudden are the busy ones like this all the tensions here you smooth that out like this take it away from the right hand which naturally falls to your side all focus is gonna be on the straw. What you're gonna find with your friends is they're gonna be absolutely convinced that there's a tear in here. I mean, that's the perfect explanation is that you maybe tore this off, pulled the straw, and then now like what you're showing here is a bit of an optical illusion. It's actually torn there. So you're gonna find everybody's interest in solving this okay, and making sense of this is gonna be the perfect misdirection away from your right hand, okay? So they can look at that boom like that and you have just created really a, like again unexpected not framed as a magic trick this visually impossible moment of magic using something so ordinary that people would almost swear there's no way you could actually do a magic trick with just a wrapped straw <laughs> slam on the brakes there my brother chris mayhew he just a little reality check there he basically said to me jay that rant there was kind of okay and cool, but you didn't see, it, it left me thinking that you didn't quite give us the answer or a suggestion regarding how can we make the magic tricks more meaningful. So I apologize. I apologize, sometimes I get so caught up. Um, first, I don't have any solution in the sense of like, uh, it's an art, not a science, right? So I don't have one perfect way to do it, but I will tell you, I learned in stand-up comedy and in magic, if they care about you, they'll care about what you do, number one. So you need to figure out a way to how, why would they care about you? Well, they're not gonna care about you if all you do is present the trick. You need to let them in. And you don't have to do it explicitly. You don't have to do it, say, go ahead, pick the four of clubs. You know, I'm a middle child, right? <laughs> you don't need to do it explicitly, but they need to get a sense that you're there for them, that you're in the moment and that you're a person and you don't have a big ego and that you are, and this is key, you respond to them. If you look at people in a sense that you, they see you care about them in the moment, they'll care about you. The only way they're gonna care about the trick, one way, is if they care about you. The other way is don't make it about you and don't make it about the trick, make it about them. 
And that's a, you can do that in many ways, whether it's explicitly saying, you know, let's try something, here's a piece of paper. I want you to write down the name of your very, very first boyfriend. Okay, I don't know if anybody here knows it. Not only, the, maybe the guy you're not even with knows who's the first boy you ever kissed, let's say. Write the name down. So all of a sudden we're into a subject and an area what they care about. Now, even if writing, you think, okay, that's uh, mentalism, but how can we do this in a card trick? Say, well, for example, one way you can do is say, I want you to write, uh, write your name on this card. Actually, not your first name. Write the name you wish you had in another life. Come on, there's, I bet sometimes someone's had a really cool name like Jessica Sam Bill, and you would love that name. So write down for the first time, right at the top of your head, write the name you wish you had. So even something like that, you've made it, uh, made it meaningful for them. It's amazing how magic has changed in the last 100, 200 years. It used to be something just in theaters. And you'd go into these theaters, you'd sit down, you'd have your suit and tie, you'd be dressed for fancy dinner, and the performers would only use the most exotic items in the world. These golden bowls, these fish bowls, something we got in ancient Egypt, a, a pillar of this or that. Now magic's the whole other way. Not only are we not in theaters, we're in the street. And not only in the street, but most it seems, and certainly i found, I get the best reaction doing magic with the most ordinary of items, which is why uh, I love to create. You'll find on my merchandise site, sankeymagic.com. You'll find a whole bunch of magic design for sort of basically doing the extraordinary with the most ordinary, which as magicians, I think is a really interesting way to go, to go through the world and try to now, in the modern age, kind of reveal how extraordinary or the extraordinary hidden within inside the ordinary. It's a really cool way. I enjoy thinking about my performance that way. That I'm just an ordinary guy, but actually I can do some extraordinary things. And you, you're just an, or, you know, an ordinary person at the bar, say, but we hang out together and ideally I inspire you to say something or to react in a way that is totally extraordinary. So together we kind of, uh, yeah, we, 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 we reveal the extraordinary within ourselves and each other through these kinds of cool tricks. So I just wanted to share that thought with you. Uh, thank you so much. I've uh, got some really cool videos coming up. Please, and you know what I'm going to do too? I'm going to put below this link, I'm going to put, uh, or below this video, a link to where you can subscribe to my newsletter. More and more you're subscribing to it. I always include some performance tips, sometimes some product news, some psychology, a real mixed bag, and it is free. So please subscribe uh, to my free uh, Sankey Magic newsletter. And thank you so much for watching. And if you liked the video, and I hope you, you did like this video, please hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching as always, and have a magical day. Oh.